Hey, and welcome to the lecture. Before we jump into the learning, just a quick reminder to check out the workbooks available on modernoptician.com through the Ultimate Apprentice Optician Study Guide or available on Amazon worldwide. It's the best way to accompany this lecture so that you can fill in the blanks, label the diagrams, do everything all concurrently and elevate your training to the next level. All the links to the workbooks and the website are all in the description down below, so make sure to check it out. Other than that, enjoy today's lesson. All right, so now that we've talked about so much anatomy, uh, we're gonna talk, well, we're still talking anatomy, but I wanna talk about the visual pathway. Now, this is a pretty interesting and intricate and sometimes confusing pathway. Um, and, you know, I wish most opticians understood this better, but I get it because it's a lot of, um, well, quite frankly, this is uh, neuro a neurological pathway, so it can be quite confusing. But we've already talked very briefly about how the eyes capture the image, they go to the retina, then they go to the optic nerve. And then for most people, it stops there. Um, they don't really think too much about what happens after. Uh, there's a whole lot of stuff that happens after. Now, the thing is about that is, you know, like we've talked about, you're going to have a lot of stuff that you're trying to learn here, you're trying to memorize, you're trying to grasp and understand. Um, it can be kind of difficult when you start getting into like really multi-step processes that have loads of parts. So bear with me we're going to go through this i want you to still take notes in the workbook and i want you to understand this however you know when it comes to learning things and we're going to talk about this a lot it's not always about stress and saying man i need to know this sometimes it's just appreciating it and understanding that there's a lot more behind the surface that goes on and once you've seen all this you're going to start to grasp it a little bit better. I don't want you to spend too much time on this and getting stressed out at the fact that you don't understand it because there's a lot of different parts to it. However, just seeing it and writing down your notes and understanding it to a certain degree is just going to help you understand how things work. And again, if you're going to be pursuing a career in this, uh, you're going to you, you got to find things that you enjoy and, and take some appreciation for the eye. So that's all we're doing. So let's go through this. You're going to see there's lots of moving parts to this, but we're just going to take our time and we're going to, well, we're not going to take, we're, we're actually going to do the opposite. We're going to breeze through it, but we're going to go through part by part a little bit, just so we have a bit of an understanding on how all of this stuff works. Okay. So here's a diagram of, it's kind of a scary looking thing, isn't it? So that's the brain and the eye and a uh, brain in the eyes and you'll notice that we have lots of different things uh lots of different little parts of this diagram that, and we're going to go through every single one of them briefly so that you have a bit of a better understanding on how um image turns into vision all right that's essentially what we're talking about the visual pathway right we've talked about uh a little we've touched very very briefly on a little bit of optics as far as how the eye captures an image we've talked about how the eyeball processes that through refraction then it refracts it to a very particular area on the retina we've talked a little bit about rods and cones and the pigment epithelium and you know ganglion cells transferring it over to the optic nerve and all this stuff and then we've talked about nothing from there so let's go over a few different things so the visual pathway consists of a series of cells and synapses that carry visual information from the environment to the brain because the brain is where everything happens right so if we think vision we think eyes however we should also be thinking brain because without the brain the eyes have nowhere to hand it off now the photoreceptors uh, of the retina first converts light energy into neuronal signals that is passed to the bipolar and ganglion cells of the retina and the optic nerve we've already talked about this stuff so this should be kind of review right so we know that we've known all this photoreceptors and you know of the of the retina how the ganglion cells of the retina and the optic nerve are kind of shared and they pass information from each other and they change from chemical to from electrical to chemical signals all this stuff we've covered already now the optic nerve of each eye crosses okay uh and then that cross takes place at the optic chasm okay and then terminates in the opposite side of the brain pretty interesting stuff right so you actually and you can't see it very well here and i'm going to try to use a highlighter but the optic nerves uh let's change colors here we're going to do purple again so there's the optic nerves here okay so you have the retina is there and it's also here so the purple and let's go green here 
what's essentially happening is that the field of vision is crossing over. So basically the retina from the temporal side of one and the, and the nasal side from the other, what happens is, is that the information, and you can't really see it very clearly here in the diagram, but there's a red line kind of coursing through the, to the chasm, which I'm going to use a pen to show it off here. There's a red line that kind of goes this way and goes over to this side. And then there's a red line that kind of comes like this and goes over. And then there's a green line that comes this way, like this and from this one over there. So the overlap is basically saying that the, the information from each field of view is actually crossing over from the right side and the left side so that they kind of mix. And this is very important and it's something we're gonna talk about in a second, but I want you to understand that the information does cross. So you, it makes sense because you have your, you know, for most people, you have two eyes and they're both capturing the same environment. What essentially is happening here is that the information from both eyes is mixing together so that we can get a better understanding of the environment. Okay, so the optic tract carries the fibers from the chasm to the LGN. Okay, where the next synapse occurs and we're going to have the LGN pop in right here. So that's the lateral geniculate nucleus. Now we're getting really, really into it now. This is much more, you know, neurology than it is, uh, you know, opticianry at this point. But again, just bear with me for a second here. Uh, from here, the fibers leave the optic, uh, sorry, leave as optic radiation that terminate in the visual cortex of the occipital lobe at the back of the brain. And you'll notice how everything from the green side came down over here and everything from the red side came back over, whoops, sorry, there. So very interesting how you know, you see how all these things kind of come back to the back of the brain, they cross over it at one point, but all the information is being kind of relayed all together. Um, very important to realize, the main thing that we want to realize here is that the reason this takes place is for something called stereopsis, so that, you know, our full field of view from each eye is being incorporated into one image, so there has to be that crossover at some point. Now, the visual pathway combines information from the retina from one eye with the information from the retina of the other and combines it in the brain, basically what I just said. Uh, the comparison of the, of the information between the two eyes provides proper visual field and stereopsis. So you have a much wider visual field because of the fact that you have both eyes, you know, one eye is on the right side, one on the left, so they each have their own field and both of those fields get combined, which gives you a much larger visual field for one image. And stereopsis is basically, the images are about the same size, they should be, and it can be combined, that helps us with depth of field, uh, with our three-dimensional vision, uh, gauging how far things are. So very interesting thing. Now, you could study this in detail, and I don't recommend you do unless you're just super interested in it, then of course, then go for it. However, I just wanted you to understand that it doesn't just stop at the optic nerve. There's a whole bunch of stuff that goes on in the brain. If you think, if, and if you think about it as a very simplified version, it, the main things you want to know is, you know, retina, optic nerve. You want to think of the chasm uh, so that you can remember that things cross over. The optic tract carries it to the visual cortex, and that's where the images happen in the brain. So why? Why do we need to know all this stuff as opticians? Well, we kind of talked about it a little bit already. However, uh, we want to know it's a multi-step process from eye to brain. Why? Well, you know what? When people have brain injuries, they often have visual problems. We just saw from the front where the eyes were all the way to the back, there's something happening throughout the brain, uh, throughout the entire visual process. So it, it stands to reason that if someone injures their brain, vision can be affected because there's a lot of moving parts of this. So it's something that you definitely have to think about. You know, things like concussions, traumatic brain injuries can definitely have a negative effect on vision in a number of ways. And also another thing to think about is how complicated this would be to solve. We're going to talk about this a little bit more when we talk about specific pathologies. However, um, neurological eye disorders are some of the most difficult to solve because, first of all, you know, repairing the brain is no walk in the park. Um, and sometimes it's very difficult to pinpoint at what part of the process things fell apart. So um, you definitely have to have some sympathy and empathy for patients who are suffering from brain injuries when it comes to vision, because sometimes the solutions are shoddy and sometimes we don't even know what the issue is. So just 
you know, if anything, if nothing more, it's to understand that there can be some challenges uh, when it comes to different kind of injuries affecting the brain. Um, stereopsis, we always talk about stereopsis as opticians because we want both eyes gathering, comparing information, and we want both eyes to have a similar experience. Otherwise, you lose stereopsis. We're going to talk about this in detail when it comes to optics, and it also comes to lens selection, things like that. Because sometimes a person can have different refractive error in each eye, a condition called anisocom sorry, um, anisometropia. And then when we correct it with different types of lenses, we can then cause anisoconia, which is the difference in size of image. And then the brain has a very difficult time molding those two images from each eye together. And then we don't have stereopsis, and then we can end up with diplopia, which is double vision, or kind of all sorts of aberration and visual discomfort. All stuff you're going to be an expert in very shortly. However, don't stress if you don't understand all the things I'm saying right now. But this is why this kind of stuff is important to understand that stereopsis is critical to proper visual function. Uh, neurological vision problems can be very difficult to diagnose and treat. Funny how I do this, right? I always get ahead of myself before I say it. But you know what? It's, it's worth mentioning again. It's very tough to know because it's such a multi-step process and there's a lot going on. Sometimes we're going to see patients receive PRISM to try to solve some of these issues. Um, sometimes we're going to have people have to go for vision therapy, different types of lens systems that might help. Uh, you know, There's always research going towards this because it's a very, very common issue. And it's not a fun issue because finding the solutions can be very tricky. All right, I think we've done enough on the visual process. I didn't want this to overwhelm. I hope it didn't. And if it did, take a step back. It's okay. This isn't something that's critical to your job. It's just so that you understand things better. Um, and I think you do. Even if you don't think you do, I think just by seeing all this and making your notes in the workbook, I think you have a little bit of a better grasp than you did before. And that's probably enough for the time being. So, you know, give yourself a pat on the back. Don't stress about it. And let's move on to the next one.